In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build a file upload form on your WordPress site. And you can define which file types people are allowed to upload. You can define how big the files can be. You can do all these things with this plugin. I'm going to show you how in this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I try to answer them the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Now let's get started. This is the website we're going to add the upload form to. We're going to put on a new page called contact. We'll add the contact page up here in the menu and let's get to it. Let's go into the dashboard and then go to plugins and add new and then look up contact form seven. This is the plugin right over here. There are lots of other form building plugins. This one has a file upload feature that is free. Other ones have them as premium. Other ones have them as free as well, but this is the one I use right up here. Feel free to try a different one because some of them do offer a free upload options. I'm going to click on install now because I want a demo site. If this is your live site, you might want to back up your site first just in case something goes wrong. It's pretty rare, but just in case it does, you have a backup you can restore back to. There's a link in the description down below to help you with that if you need help. Click on install now when you're ready, then click on activate. And then on the left hand side here, we have a new item called contact. Click on that and we have a contact form already added. This is just a blank form or very simple form added by the plugin when it's installed. You can add a new one by clicking on add new or just go with the one we have right here. I'm gonna click on edit to go with the one we have because there's something there to work with. You can also duplicate this form that the plugin installs in case you don't wanna start with a blank page. And this form, if you read through here, it's HTML so it can be a little scary, but it's actually not. If you read through, it actually makes a lot of sense. This first bit here is an HTML tag called label, which is the label for the form field. And this is the your name field. That's gonna be the text on the page. And in square brackets is the actual field that the plugin is gonna insert. And then we have the closing label, which wraps around all of it. So that's our first field right there, the name field. Then we have an email field right here. We have a subject field right here and a your message field right here. And we're going to add a new field. To do that, I'm just going to copy what we have here from the opening label tag to the closing label tag. Hit enter two times and then paste it right here. Hit enter again. And now we can customize this little bit to make our new fields. I'm going to change the text that's written on the page to upload your file or image because images are files as well. I'm going to delete the square bracket area. And then I'm going to click on file right up here. This is going to open this dialog box. I'm going to make this field not required. Maybe they don't want to upload the file. Maybe they have questions first. Who knows? You can make this required if you want to. Just check this box. The name of the field, I'm going to keep it as this. That's totally fine. This is for your internal use. The file size limit allows you to limit the file size. This means that people can't upload files that are 15 gigabytes which is probably limited by your server anyway. But if it's not limited by your server, you have to limit it somewhere, which you can do here. But this limit has to be in bytes. You might not be used to working in bytes, but if you wanted to limit the file size to 10 megabytes, for example, we can go to Google and look up 10 megabytes in bytes. And that is one with seven zeros after it. But because I want to copy and paste something, I'm going to click on the second result, put in 10 megabytes. And here we have the number of bytes after this ad goes away. Here it is right here. We don't want to use the first option, which is in decimals. Technically, when you're talking megabytes and gigabytes and things, that's a multiple of base 10, which would be exactly a round number ending in a zero if it was base 10. But for computers, they use something called binary and one gigabyte is not exactly one gigabyte technically on a computer. One megabyte is not exactly one megabyte. So we want to use this one right here, which is not exactly the base 10 answer, and paste that right there. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. Acceptable file types, this is where you set what file types are allowed to be uploaded. You don't want to leave this blank because that means anybody could upload anything, including malware, which you don't want. So we're going to limit this to images and a few document types. So we're going to use JPEG, JPG, add a space, add a pipe character, and then PNG, add a space, pipe character, 
Maybe we'll allow GIFs, add a space, add a pipe character, and then docx space pipe character, and then slsx for spreadsheets. Those are the file types I'm gonna allow. You can enter here, whichever ones you do wanna allow. Ones that don't fall under this category will not be uploaded, which is what we want. We don't need to add an ID attribute or a class attribute. This is for CSS styling. If you know what CSS is, you can go ahead and add these and customize your form. If you don't, don't worry about it. Click on insert tag, and now we have our tag inserted, just like that. Then we can click on save, and whenever you add a new field, you have to make sure this field is added to the email as well. So this tab we're on is the form tab. And before we move to the email tab, I also wanna point out all these options up here are different types of fields you can add to your form. You can make your form as long as you want. And you can add all these different things with the default plugin. There's also more add-ons for Contact Form 7. There's a whole playlist of Contact Form 7 videos on this channel, actually. There's a link to that in the card up above in the description down below. You can add these and others and make your form whatever you want. To make sure whatever's uploaded to this field is added to the actual email that's sent, we have to go to the Mail tab. On this tab, we see the To field. This is where the email is sent to. This is the site admin email, which you can set under settings and general. I'm gonna control click or command click on that to open it in a new tab. And we see right here, administration email address. This is the email that is put in here dynamically when the email is generated. You can also add other emails. You can add a comma and you can add frank at bananas.com. You can add another one if you want. You can add as many as you want, not a period, add a comma. Comma separate them all. You can have as many as you want in there. I'm just gonna add my other email because sometimes the learning lab one has trouble receiving email from forms when I'm testing them for some reason. The from field is going to be where the email's from. This would be the from field in the email that's received. It's gonna take the site title, which is right here in the general settings. So it's gonna show wp-phd, and then in brackets, it's gonna have this in pointy brackets. And the subject line is gonna be the site title again. I'm gonna delete that. And then it's gonna be what they actually enter into the form, into the your subject field. If we go back to the form, we can see the your subject field is right here. That's gonna be entered right there. Reply to is gonna be your email. So whatever they put in the email field, that's gonna be the address that's there when I or whoever receives the email hits reply. It's gonna auto input their email address for the reply email address. In the message body, we have from the name that's entered and the email, the subject again, the message body is right here and that's all totally fine. Then it has this little sign off. You can customize these things however you want. This is the email that's sent to you or your team. You can have this display whatever information from the form that you need but we need to have the file uploads. That's what we have the file attachments field for right down here. We need to enter the field name of our file attachment field. It is right up here. This is a field name that we can specify when we create this field. We chose not to change it, but you can change this to your files, for example, so it, it maintains consistency with the other fields. I'm gonna leave mine as it is, I'm gonna paste it right down there and now our files will be attached. If you have lots and lots of fields in your form, you might wanna customize these names. Let's go back to the form builder. Here we see that same name, file-819. You can change this to whatever. As long as it's, there's no spaces, call this your file, and then it'll be changed to your file when we save. And if we add a new field, let's just click on drop down menu, we change the name to your drop-down choices. And this is gonna be what's displayed on the email builder. So if you have lots and lots of fields, you might wanna make sure that these are very descriptive so you know what they are, so you know what you're adding to your email. Go back to the mail tab, and we see that your file is now the text for the file upload. Let's copy that, and let's replace it down here. It doesn't auto-replace it down there. You need to do this manually every time if you change the field names. And there, our email's done. We also have the option to create email too. Check this box. You can fill out all the same stuff for the same email. And this one by default is being sent to the person who sent you the email. So it has your email as the to address. So this is the form filler, filling out the form 
and then they'll get an email sent to the email they enter. You can use this as a confirmation that the email was sent if you want to. I'm not gonna use email two in this case. I'm gonna click on save to make sure I've saved all our changes. For this tutorial, we're not gonna cover messages or additional settings. I have tutorials on those in the playlist I mentioned earlier, but for this tutorial, they're not important. Now let's copy this short code. We're gonna create a new page. Let's call it contact, add a short code block, paste the short code right in there, and publish. Publish again. Now one last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add this page to our main navigation menu, and then we'll take a look at how it looks. Let's go back into the main dashboard, go to appearance, and then menus. First things first, we have to make sure we're on the right menu. In this drop down here, it shows all the menus on your site. If you just have one, you're in the right place. If you have multiple, you have to pick the one that you need. You can tell by the menu pages that are listed down here. These are the pages that appear in the menu system itself. So if you recognize this as the correct place, just leave it here. If you don't, switch to a different menu, click on select, and that's gonna show a different menu. And keep doing that until you find the correct one where you want the contact form to appear. And then check the contact form box. It's under the most recent tab in my case. If you don't see it here, choose view all. This is all the pages on your site, or you can search if you have too many pages to just glance through. I'm gonna select contact from the most recent, click on add to menu. It's gonna add at the very bottom. There it is. Then I'll click on save menu. And now we are ready to take a look. Let's go to the main site and we have our contact link right there. Click on contact. Here we have our form with our file upload field. Just filled in some dummy data there, and then we click on choose file to find a file on our hard drive. Just gonna use this one. It's 89 kilobytes, which is within our 10 megabyte limit. Click on open. It's also a JPEG, which is an allowed file type. Click on submit when you are ready to send it. Then we receive a message here saying, thank you for your message, it has been sent. At this point, had you turned on email too, the sender would also receive an email as well as you receiving the email with the attachment. And here's the email in my inbox. It took a few minutes to arrive. Sometimes with attachments, it can take longer, and sometimes it doesn't. Just really depends on internet traffic in the world, I guess. Anyway, here it is, and here's all the information we set for the from, reply to, and the to. And we have our subject line up here. We have the content that we specified for inside the email, and we have our file attachment right here. And that's how easy it is to allow you just to upload images or other files and send them to you. If you want to customize your Contact Form 7 even more, check out this playlist right over here. It's all about Contact Form 7. There are lots and lots of tutorials on there for you. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe, ring the bell, so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.